Good morning, George Hepworth, Grover Park Consulting. I recently built the Lander Trail Foundation, an online searchable database using Power Apps and SQL Server for their extensive collection of books on the Lander Trail. As I explained in a previous video, the main reason for choosing Power Apps for the data collection interface was the lack of an internet connection in the museum where the books are held. With Power Apps running on a mobile device, such as an iPad or even an iPhone, it's possible to collect the data without having to have that internet connection available. However, that meant I wouldn't have the power of VBA in my interface to drive all of the functions that I wanted to provide. On the other hand, I do have a SQL Server database. And in that database, I have some very powerful data management tools, including a stored procedure, or multiple stored procedures, actually. I'm going to show you one of them today. A stored procedure is prepared SQL code that you can save, and that code can then be reused over and over again. Unlike Power Apps, where you have to replicate your code every time you need it, you can simply call that stored procedure from any place in your code, you can also pass parameters to a stored procedure. So that stored procedure can act on multiple records or different records at different times each time you, set, you invoke it. So let's take a look at a flow that every Access developer who wants to use Power Apps as part of their toolkit needs to know. This is the stored procedure in the SQL Server database behind the Lander Trail Foundation catalog which creates a calculated name for our publications so that we can sort alphabetically on the first significant word in the title, ignoring the articles a uh, and the. Store procedure itself has some standard syntax at the top. It has the option to create or alter this procedure. If the procedure does not yet exist, it creates it. If it does exist, it will change it according to what's in the code now. We give it a parameter. The parameter is the primary key of the record, which we're going to create a calculated value for the pub sort name. This is standard SQL. We're going to update the publication, set that calculated field. We look at the first three, excuse me, the first two characters. If they are the letter A and a blank space, then we're going to replace the A. We start with position three, move the comma A to the end. If the publication title doesn't start with A, we look at the first four letters to see if it starts with the space. If it does, and we do the same thing. We go to the fifth position, take everything from there to the end of the publication title, and append the comma, the. If neither of those two conditions are met, we just repeat, repeat the exact publication title in the pub sort name. This will handle pretty much everything that I've encountered so far. In order to make sure that this only impacts the one record we're looking at now, we pass it a where clause that says only make this change on the record in the publication table where the rec primary key is equal to the value we passed in. And we pass that in every time we create a new record in our Power Apps application for publication. Or if we alter anything about that publication, we're going to run this stored procedure to ensure that our publication title and pub sort name stay in sync. You could make this stored procedure more elegant by in inserting logic to determine if the publication title itself was changed. And if it was changed, run this to update the pub sort name. And if any change was made to a publication record that did not involve the pub publication title, you know, bail out. I don't think that's worth the extra effort. This is the flow in Lander Trail Foundation, which invokes 
that particular stored procedure. Rather than explain this in detail, I'm going to refer you to a, an excellent YouTube video that Shane Young of PowerApps 911 produced on how to create flows in the new PowerApps V2. I'll just point out that there are two steps. The first is the call that invokes the, the flow from PowerApps. This parameter, which we pass to the stored procedure, is optional. You can invoke a, a stored procedure with or without a parameter. In this case, my stored procedure is parameterized, so I ask for a publication ID, which is the primary key of the record I'm going to update. The next step is to execute that stored procedure, passing to it the publication ID we retrieved. The result of that stored procedure is that the pub sort name in the table is updated using the stored procedure we just saw. This same pattern can be used in many places. Basically, you call the stored procedure from PowerApps, passing a parameter if one is required or without a parameter if one is not required for the particular stored procedure. And then you issue the execute stored procedure command. Then you execute the stored procedure by name on the database where it lives. You can replicate this with any number of different stored procedures, automating all of those heavy duty data processing tasks that are not easily done or replicated in PowerApps. Let's look at how it's used in the Power Apps application. When we add a book, and I'll add one here, this title has the leading the. The save command includes codes to create a new record in the publication table, and then it returns a value to this context variable. That context variable contains the record for that newly added book. If it's an update to that uh, record, it will contain the record updated. Once we have added or updated that record, we simply call our flow, which is create pub sort LTF books dot run. That tells Power Apps to run that stored excuse me, to run that flow and pass to it the required parameter, which is the publication ID from this new book. SQL Server takes over and handles the rest. If you are an Access developer considering adding Power Apps to your toolkit, one of the things that might be of concern is how do you manage heavy, complicated data processing tasks that you would do with VBA or stored procedures or functions or views? Here's the answer. You don't lose the ability to run SQL Server stored procedures. Not only can you invoke them from any place within your Power Apps application by creating a view, you don't have to replicate all of that code. This particular code, for example, that either adds a new record or updates an existing record has to be copied wherever you need to do that within your application. That's a copy paste process. With a flow running a stored procedure, all you need to do is invoke the flow by naming it with dot run and passing it required parameters. This allows you to achieve a fairly close approximation to the reusable code that we are so familiar with and so reliant on in our access applications. Well, I hope you've seen something here today, heard something here today that will inspire you to consider Power Apps as an addition to your developer's toolkit. You can add the remote data collection capability and still have the power and flexibility of SQL Server behind your applications. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you'll be aware of the next time I drop a video. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.